If Craig can't get his video working, then you know what we're going to do? We're going to put up Giraffe. I am now picturing Craig's head on top of Giraffe's neck. Yes, it wouldn't look right. No. It it define like right. A, sporting a bowling ball on a pencil. Like. You're not helping, Craig. That's fine. Maybe you are. I don't know. So Punk says, yes, I judged you. Brian Danielson also judged you. You can ask him. Homicide also judged you because we saw the potential of what you could be and you never lived up to that standard of what you could achieve because you're a bum. And those three little letters, B-U-M, yes. bum. This crowd in 2021 gasped. <laughs> CM Punk was a total heel and Eddie Kingston was a total baby face. Absolutely. Because man, if someone came up to me and they'd been they judged me my entire career and and everything that Eddie accused Punk of doing, and then Punk's response is, Well, we did that because we saw so much in you, I'd be like, Fuck you. That's f you're full of shit. Eddie Kingston was so passionate and he was showing emotion. His face was red, he was sweating. Oh yes. He was spitting and snarling. This looked legit yeah and it was and you could feel it through the tv to a lot of people cm punk's going to be in the healing feud and to a lot of people eddie kingston's going to be in the healing feud but you care either way oh man i can't wait to see this match ah and my new most irritating man in wrestling john silver and this stupid <laughs> stupid budge joke he calls adam cole budge no one knows what budge is or what it means or why it's supposed to be so insulting. He just repeats it and repeats it. He has one joke. He's going to tell it 47 times until you go insane and laugh. He's Rob Bartlett with a better bi a better body and worse hair. Wow. It's awful. <laughs> Vinny, would you ever consider reviewing a WBF show? What yeah. are we going to review? Well, how jacked everyone was. Vince's commentary. Yeah. How creepily he was into enthusiastic about these bodybuilders. Huh. <laughs> Craig seems to be not in favor of this plan. We're going to have four auctions. So four lucky blokes or blokettes. I should ask if that's the female derivative of bloke. I hope this doesn't get me in trouble. A uh, bird is one, 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 a female equivalent for the word bloke. That that seems like a 60s term that wouldn't fly. Nowadays. I was, I was going to say Austin Powers said it. Well, yeah, because it fly. was a 60s gimmick. That was his gimmick. It actually was. He was the guy from the 60s. He ripped off... Uh, In the 90s. Pickles are disgusting. Pick pickles have a very strong flavor. I, got, yeah. I can understand why it wouldn't a be A disgusting everyone. strong flavor. I love a great big dill pickle straight from the jar. It's a I didn't like snack. where that was going. We need to do the... Uh, unnecessary, uh, unnecessary censorship, because that's the winner right there. Craig's a fiction for yeah. big pickles. Sweet dill pickles, Granny, you like them? No, not dill. Uh, you don't like Sweet those pickles. dill pickles? You like those little gherkins? You like they're, those? They're okay. I have, let's see, Friday Night's Back Ten. Naomi versus Baszler. Tw uh, face chops. Each has turn at denominance. Dominance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was Paul Bearer and the Undertaker in character. Right. Talking about dying of hunger. And how it's bad. <laughs> Bizarre. Unfortunately, in Somalia, too many people are dying. And he looks, he's slow, because he's Undertaker, he's really slow. He slowly looks up and he goes, No man should starve to death. <sighs> went, what in the fuck did I just see? Vince really was a tremendous interviewer, by the way. We're talking about a, 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 talk about him on commentary sometimes. It's like a mixed bag, but at least he's enthusiastic. Dude, one of these days when we write the book about what Vince was best at, uh -huh. it's going to be everything except booking at the end. The best friends are now part of chaos. That, in fact, means that Orange Cassidy and Toru Yano are both members of chaos. A great team that would they be. They could team together. What a team that would be. And he grabs Chris Jericho's feet. And he twists, and he rolls them over in what appears to be the walls of Jericho. But no, Dan Lambert, while having the hold on, is screaming, It's called a Boston Crab! Championship Wrestling from Florida, 1975! The real Rocky Johnson! This is ungodly great. 
I can fully vouch for Eddie's promo on Punk the other night. I was sitting right there in IWA Mid-South locker room. Punk called Eddie and his partner at the time, Blackjack Marciano, fat, lazy, and unsafe. Wow. Marciano had just accidentally injured Delirious in a previous match, and Punk was hot about it and just buried them nonstop. I could see why Eddie hung on to that hate and anger for so long. Just wanted to write you and hope this info helps, so... That's what happened. That's the incident this is all built on. The Avalanche Brainbuster packed into this match. This is the second match in a row that Pac has hit somebody with a top rope Brainbuster. And it's not like the, uh, you know, it's a top rope superplex that they call a Brainbuster. Yeah. I mean, he drops them almost on their fucking heads. On their brain. He busts their uh, brain. That's bad. And then one of the cameramen had passed in front of another cameraman. So you knew something was up, and the something was the cameraman was Don Callis in disguise. He wallops Hangman with a camera. Hangman goes down in gigs, and they hold him up, and Omega signs the contract in Hangman's blood. This was a go-home show. We got all of our interviews, all of our angles, all of our video packages, and like four fucking great matches. This was a a go-home show like for the ages, quite frankly. NXT just feels like... The same episode every week. Every match feels exactly the same. Every angle feels exactly the same. Every promo feels exactly the same. It's all the same bland, boring badness. In storyline, they had been posing for seven minutes. They won their match. They posed through a commercial break. They posed through a an interview segment. And they're still fucking posing. The posing, Brian, is giving them too much credit. If you go to a photo shoot, you watch a model, and, you, and they're posing, they'll turn one way, they'll turn the other, they'll tilt their head back, they smile, or they'll get moody, or they get sultry, whatever. These women just stand there. They're just mannequins. It had to be the worst squash I've ever seen in my life. I did not think it was possible. Like, literally, if you would have said, I, I could pick you and, like, you and Craig in 2021... Like, you two could not fuck up a 1 minute and 21 second squash match, okay? Nobody can. Except Erica Yan and Electra Lopez. He knows they have a lot of work to do. But there is something special with Vaughn Wagner. Name one thing. This is what Vince always does. He always is looking for... I want I want him to look good in the airport. Ah, no more indie fucking blokes. But <laughs> I can't help but notice that once again, Vinny, the main event of NXT 2.0 is f- fucking veteran worker Pete Dunn versus seven-year indie vet Carmelo Hayes in a fucking wrestling match. This crowd is chanting, this is awesome, and fight forever. No, Because they're thankful. <laughs> <laughs> they're so thankful. <laughs> Vinny, well, I was chanting, this is awesome, for this match. After watching the first hour and 45 minutes of this show, I was bowing to Vince. Like, thank you, Vince, for giving me such a great match. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem... Max, smarten up to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You were being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog.